Okay, you guys, so what we're up to here today, <clears throat> we want to make use of the S90XS and we want to, uh, I want you guys to uh, understand the uh, functions of it and what we can do and what I do when I make a little piece. And uh, maybe first things first, what I want to explain is the basic buttons, so when I talk about them, you know what I mean. Um, we'll start in the uh, top left. We got our part select, which is the top row of buttons. We have our parts on off buttons, which are these. Uh, the part arpeggios. So even though we have a voice on, if we have none of these buttons on, none of the arpeggios will play. The hold functions, hold buttons will allow us to um, well hold the key rather than having to press it and hold it. We can simply activate hold and off we go. Hold off. Okay, now that we got that down. To the sliders. Whenever we start a new piece, a new arpeggio or anything new, what I usually do is I reset the sliders because when we first initialize our synthesizer, the sliders reach only from 0 to 100%. But when you reset them, which means we go all the way down and all the way up, we can now go to 127%. So we get the, get the full range of the volume. And that's usually what I do. All the way down, all the way up, and then we're set. We have our uh, arpeggio buttons. So through 1 to 5 we can select arpeggios applied to one voice so either we go with one arpeggio for one voice all the way through or we adjust arpeggios from 1 to 5 according to the voice we've selected as well as our selection buttons so for the increase decrease pretty straightforward the movement keys and our scroll wheel uh, we'll also make use of the shift button so that we can um, copy arpeggios from something that we've already chosen to the remaining 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 keys. <laughs> it's getting a little late. It's been a hot day too. Yeah. Okay, and then we also have our category search function right here that we will make use of. So that should be it to that. Now let's dive right into this and we will start with a new um, new form, new performance. So we'll go into category search and we'll go to a new spot and we'll just pick yeah, 15. So what I do is just select this. By the way, the camera is uh, stationary so there's not much I can do. But um, yeah, you see new form, performance, and that's all it is at this point. There is nothing on, although we can activate it. There is going to be nothing here except a piano. And that's it. No other arpeggios. <clears throat> no other arpeggios and no other voices. That's it. So, of course, we gotta make up our mind of uh, on what what we wanna play, and um, just a little explanation. I've already done this tutorial. I just had sound issues, so I'm redoing it, and I'm reusing the selections that I've done. Um, it's a piece that may sound familiar to some of you guys, and it just saves me some time. So, all these are non-functional anyway, but we'll start off in with a part number of one. Ah, man. And uh, we'll just go into the edit function. Okay, <clears throat> that brings us into this screen. And then we hit our part select for the, uh, well, part one. And that brings us, us uh, <laughs> right into here. Now I start mixing German into the English, wow. Um, okay, and we want to pick a different piano. 
Now, <clears throat> whenever we search for voices, we can either scroll through all of them until we find the right one, or when we're in the uh, bank, we just hit the category search button on the top right, le uh, yeah, top right, and then we just go into a piano, and then all the pianos are listed. And for our little example here, we'll just make use of the full concert. Grand. It's my favorite anyway. And we'll also <clears throat> just adjust this to arpeggio play only. That means that we are not able to play any other note other than the arpeggio. So if we hit any key during the play, they won't sound. They may change the, uh, the velocity, if we like, or the pitch, but that's it. Okay, so this is good to go. Play mode we skip. <clears throat> now we go into arpeggio and we chose one of the uh, arpeggios. So what we want to use is something R&B um, style, some, some R&B style. So right here, main category, we are in the keyboard, that's right. Subcategory, which is the genre, I guess, and uh, we go into R&B. And then we have the presets, and we want to make use of 241. Now I know that, but if I didn't know it, what we would do is, um, we'll simply start somewhere. So, arpeggio on, whole function on, all the arpeggios are armed and dangerous, our volume is to the max, and then we just start somewhere. sure what arpeggio to use just scroll through them and uh, you know it could go anywhere and uh, that's what I what I usually do is I go and you know depending on the mood I go go across this whole band with all these presets and check one out and if I like it and that's what I hang on to but for our example we use uh, 241 now to the shift and store button because you see this one button blinking. That indicates that we have for our voice number one, or part one, we have only one arpeggio. So if I play this arpeggio and I select the other buttons, nothing's gonna change, nothing's gonna happen. Well, except nothing will play, of course, uh, as soon as the arpeggio is uh, at the end of the measure. So none of these have anything on them. So in order to fill those, we could either go into Arpeggio 2, which we select there. So you'll see in the top Arpeggio 2 for part 1. And there's nothing in there. So we could remember, well, 241. <clears throat> right? We go into that, that, and 241. Or, to accelerate this, and this is not really in the manual, I don't know how I found it. Ah, oh, come on, zoom already! <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just make use of, we'll go into our arpeggio number one, because that's the one we want to copy. We hold shift and store, and copy it over. Select for each arpeggio, and we'll have to let go of the keys. Which is awkward, but that's how it is. So, from arpeggio 1 through 5, it's all the same, no matter what we select. But, we don't want to just have the uh, piano play. We want to also add um, drums, percussions, uh, guitar and bass. We'll uh, select part number 2. And we'll select drums and percussions. So, with our direction keys, we'll go... Actually, we've got to exit, <coughs> exit the arpeggio, or if you don't know a number, we'll just go into drums and percussions right now, so that we find something that we like. And because our keyboard is R&B, we want to go R&B here as well, because then it would have the same kind of rhythm. 
it's otherwise it's rather hard to time time the rhythms and get it all aligned. So I'll just have an R and B selected and um, we'll just leave it at that and then we can go and find ourselves some drums. We'll go into a category search again and those are percussions only drums and percussions. And then we can activate our part and we'll just play it. Until we find something that we, that we like. Well, that's pretty cool too. And we want to just get stuck with uh, number seven right now. It's gonna be all right. And then we confirm with our enter button. And whoops, and whoops. this and then we do the same thing for our part three um, or we just go and find another arpeggio let's do that right now something else of course we want to select arpeggio play only for the uh, drums and percussions and let's say let's say we play here and we want to make use of chords or put in a melody Without changing anything else, what will happen is, let me show you. That's what we don't want. Now, to minimize the impact of that, what we'll do is we'll go into Arpeggio. And we'll select Arpeggio Edit. And then in page number one, there's nothing we need now, two has nothing we need for now, three has nothing we need for now, but in number four, this is one of the most important pages, we have note limit low, limit high, and velocity limit low and high. What that does is it will restrict the uh, keys that will start, stop, or have any other impact on an arpeggio. So for our drums and percussions, since they are independent on the, the pitch, we will just select a limitation of the lowest keys, which is minus two, and let's say C1. So we'll go all the way over here and we'll go to C1. Now, what did we do here? What we just did is we limited ourselves to the keys that will run this arpeggio. Now, right now, nothing will play. If we hit this key, nothing will happen. If we hit this key, nothing will happen. But, we go to C1, that's the low or the high limit that we just set. That will start our arpeggio. Now we can set this any lower, it doesn't matter. What we can also do is we can set the velocity, which is right underneath, and what that would do is, now I'm just, no, no problem, we'll start it. And we, if we set the velocity to the max, and we go to 127, won't start, won't start, we'll start. So velocity meaning how hard you hit the key, that's, that's going to determine when the arpeggio will start. So we've limited ourselves to a, um, the, uh, the range of the keys on the keyboard to start our drums. And that should be it for now, I'll just change the arpeggio to uh, what I had before and that is going to be... Um, 4, 3, 15. Doot, doot, doot. Just because it sounds good, I know that already. And all the changes that I've done here in the first tutorial, I did on the fly. 
Um, there is no proof for it, but um, trust me, it's really not that hard. Now, we'll um, add the arpeggio. We copy it all the way across again. By the way, you'll see that message in the screen. So our part 1 and 2 are copied all the way across 1 to 5. That's a good reference to uh, start our piece at. Now if I go and hit the part select 3, you'll see it changes in the top right corner and it will also change the arpeggio. What we want to put at part or onto part 3 is a guitar. So we might as well go into guitar right now. And I'm not sure what the PL stands for. But there's two guitar settings, MG and PL. Uh, that's how newbie I am. That's how little I know. We'll just go into R&B and we'll go to 1095 because I know that's what we want. And then we can select our voice. Category search, guitar, and we want to make use of 58 Barcelona arpeggio only we don't want any other key to interfere and we'll also limit our node range to D1 at the very low end okay the higher range doesn't matter we'll do the same thing for part 1 And we got everything set. Let's listen into that. Okay, so we got that going, and now what we will do is we'll just copy that across as well. It's just a good starting point when you have everything copied over, right? Because uh, even though all these are preset, um, if we go, you know, let's say we just start our piece, and we have our part one and three already going, and we just got to start at the same time here. Okay, so we got that playing and we want to perform. What we can do is, if we stay in the arpeggio, we can simply select our arpeggio on the fly. We don't have to choose any of the buttons because those are our presets. So if we like the uh, bass at this point, then we just select our bass, which is our part two. Just uh, change it right there. Okay, makes sense. So let's just add the uh, last voice to part number four. And we know it's going to be a bass, so we'll select bass and R&B, and then 2304 worked for me very good. Okay, so we have to select a voice, and we'll also limit this one actually to D2. I um, should probably zoom on a little more. Okay, uh, go to D1. Sorry, D1, velocity stays the same, voice we're just going to add our bass which is going to be uh, called upright, 
arpeggio only. Okay, and then we uh, test it out. Um, what did I miss? Voice, preset, arpeggio. Oh, I turned the arpeggios off. working. So we'll copy that across. We'll have to do that for the guitar too, right? No. Oops. No, we've done that. Okay. You can also select common, but you know, as you want to edit it on the fly, you may want to do that differently. But what we can do at this point is we'll just go across all our parts and see that they're all on. And uh, then we can go across all the settings that we've done for each part. So I'll do that right now. So I'll just check for our low and high settings. Okay. And then we can check our arpeggios. And they're all the same across anyway. So now let's edit our arpeggios. And we'll do that beginning at part number one. And for the First one we want to keep what we got. For the second one we want to have 42. For the third one we want to have 39. The fourth one's 40, uh, 239. And the fifth one is 239 as well. And then we go into part number two, which were our drum and percussions. And it's for number one, the same one, 4316. The middle one, the third one, is going to be 21. And then we have a 4309 and another 309. Now, the uh, decrease and increase buttons are very nice for that because they're very precise. Otherwise, if you just want to be you know, spontaneous while you're performing, the scroll wheel is your best friend. Just be aware of the low and high end of the category that you're in. Once you switch from R&B, let's say, to Electro, your swing, the uh, rhythm, may change for the worse. But let's go into all the other arpeggios and we'll set them up. Number one for our guitar is going to be the 95. Number two is the 96. Number three is 88, we figure. Number four. 83 and number 5 is 82. For our bass we had selected first one then we had a 05 uh, 2314 interesting. The fourth one was a 2314 and so was the fifth one. Could have just copied it over but whichever way. So now the one disadvantage that uh, I have still that I've not come across is um, the timing of the uh, different parts because let's say we start off um, with the, the bass and let's say we have no, no feeling for timing Doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> right. So so far, what I've done is I simply start all of my arpeggios all the way across, and uh, yeah, I just time them like this. Now. If we deselect our parts, so parts off, they're still playing. So they're still timed, which is perfect. And uh, I guess what I would suggest is leave, leave them all on and then you go through your arpeggios and you memorize them.
so on and so forth. And then uh, you're pretty much done. You can, like I say, change your arpeggios on the fly or not, whichever, whichever way you prefer. We will start off with our guitar and um, let's see what damage we can do. We we'll make sure that our sliders are initialized properly. Whoops. And so on and so forth, you know the rest. So <laughs> um, you can play around, and like I say, you can change anything on the fly. That's pretty awesome. So let's say we change. Um, I won't be talking through this, but what I will do is I'll change the arpeggio without selecting any of the presets, and we'll also change the voice because I like that one uh, drum drum set a little bit better. So let's just start here. So, uh, I, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm not exactly uh, good at it right now. Uh, for which I apologize, but you see, I'm not a pianist, I'm not a professional, I'm just a noob, just lucky sometimes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll end this with, uh, yeah, I hope not too bad performance all the way across the band. And uh, I'll show you on the screen what I'm doing other than failing. So let's just um, start this again. I'll leave it at that. Okay.
Something like that. How do you like that? <laughs> well, like I say, there's a lot of ways to doing this and I will be getting quicker, I guess, and better and time it better and learn more about the uh, um, blending and all that stuff, but that's what you can do. Anyway, have fun. Enjoy yourself.